Brad, everyone. My name is Tracy Husel, and I'm an analytics manager for Dunn Solutions, and I'm online uh, from our Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota location. In our webinar today, I'm first going to give you an introduction to Dunn Solutions. I will then talk about what a data lake is, and then I will discuss how a data lake can be used to gain insights to make informed business decisions. On the way, I will discuss some of the common challenges I see companies grapple with, you know, with regards to getting data in the hands of consumers and how you can combat these challenges. At the end of the presentation, uh, we will respond to as many questions as we can, and those questions we cannot get to will be addressed and sent to all attendees via email. Um, please use the chat window uh, in the GoToWebinar to submit your questions. So let's get started. Dunn Solutions is a digital transformation consultancy, and our mission is to bring velocity to our customers. Velocity is made up of two components, speed and direction. After all, if you want to move fast, you want to move fast in the right direction. And we bring speed through automation and direction through analytics. We have offices in the US and India. Our corporate office is in Chicago with remote offices in Minneapolis, which is where I'm at right now, and Bangalore. We have a long history of delivering innovative business technology to companies since our inception in 1988. So we have been around for over 30 years, which actually is a very long time in our industry. We believe most every organization should strive for velocity and velocity enables the velocity virtuous cycle. The velocity virtuous cycle is a feedback loop that uses the vast amounts of data created through process automation to provide insight through analytics. Those insights are then through automation fed back into the business process for improvement and optimization. And with the use of Dunn Solutions advanced predictive and prescriptive analytic capabilities, this feedback loop will accelerate the speed and dial in the direction as market conditions or business climate changes. <clears throat> Excuse me. A key part of Velocity is to provide business insight from data to your business users. This is really at the core of what we are going to talk about today. Now, information consumers are hungry for data, and the ability to react almost instantaneously to changing customer demands can be a key competitive differentiator for many companies. And to no surprise, the one way to better understand your customer demands is through the use of analytics. As most of you already know, organization data can hold the key to what is or may be happening. However, many companies and data consumers really struggle with servicing the golden nuggets of information that can enable this advantage. <clears throat> In addition, many of us are aware of that it can be very time consuming, difficult, and expensive to get the data needed because of existing organization processes and technology constraints that are in place. Most organizations have operational reports or an enterprise data warehouse for reporting. A data warehouse facilitates reporting and analysis for decision makers. And for those of you not familiar with a data warehouse, the data is typically focused on business processes. The data is typically integrated across multiple enterprise source systems. The data is consistent, it's tested, it's verified by subject matter experts. And the data is quick to retrieve and easy to understand. Many organizations sometimes refer to the data warehouse as the one source of the truth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, 80% of data consumers need exposure to key performance indicators and operational data to do their job and to help them make sure that things are running smoothly or not running smoothly. Uh, a data warehouse is ideal for them, but this solves only part of the problem. 10 to 15% of data consumers are analysts and do more analysis. Many times they use the data warehouse as a source, but then it is very common for them to dive back into the source systems to get more data. Data scientists do very deep analysis. They are voracious consumers and eat data for breakfast. They typically, there typically exists a litany of stories that are hidden in data and information consumers are hungry to explore it. However, are frustrated with the barriers. It is time consuming and costly to add additional attributes or metrics to a data warehouse. And as I alluded to earlier, a data warehouse typically integrates data across multiple systems. The data is consistent, tested, and verified by subject matter experts, and is typically quick to retrieve and easy to understand. Now, to do all that, requirements need to be gathered. ETL processes need to be modified to develop the required transformations to get the data from the source 
into the required structures in the data warehouse. Now, operational reports can be enhanced or extended, but again, doing this involves pulling in IT to prioritize that work. So what if some of your data consumers were given a repository to explore? Or what if your organization had a repository of lots of data to use for ad hoc or, or self-service analytics requiring little involvement from IT? This is the purpose of a data lake. Think of a data lake as a system of insight that can be leveraged to empower data consumers and also can serve as a very cost-effective complement to a data warehouse. Now, James Dixon of Pentaho is credited with coining the phrase data lake. Think of a data lake as a man-made reservoir of water in its natural state and no processing. Whereas think of a, a data warehouse like bottled water, cleansed, packaged, and delivered for your consumption. That's why you pay, you know, $2 for a bottle of water at the convenience store. Data lakes retain all data in its raw form, whether it is structured, semi-structured, or unstructured data. Whereas the data warehouse only includes data that is processed, verified, and only the data that, that is necessary to use for reporting and analysis. Similar to bottling water, preparing data for a data warehouse is time consuming and expensive. You take, if you take a step back and think about it, from an architecture or engineering perspective, a data lake has a simple architecture. It's an organized and governed repository of data. Both the construction and the ongoing operations and maintenance is relatively simple compared to that of a data warehouse. This simple construction and operation makes a data lake a very cost-effective system of insight. Now, the main idea of a data lake is to act as a data landing area for the raw data from the many data sources in an organization. It provides organizations with a cost-effective way to store information for later processing and analysis. It enables your information consumers to focus on finding the next big thing or that golden nugget. A data lake facilitates data exploration and discovery because it is a landing zone for vast amounts of data, usually stored in a lower cost repository. This repository allows collection of data that may or not be used later. And the data remains in an unprocessed format, which frees up resources from data processing and refinement operations. This data may be structured, such as data from your transactional systems or some of your applications. Uh, Semi-structured, that could be like uh, data feeds or uh, text. And then unstructured is, would be examples of that are like email, images, audio, and video. And video. So that's kind of what this picture illustrates, uh, the various uh, streams of data that come in, or rivers, or uh, it depends on the size, but you can see the structured, the semi-structured, and the unstructured. And then in the middle is the lake, uh, where it can be explored. A data lake is not a replacement for a data warehouse. It's important to remember. A data lake definitely complements a data warehouse and can be a potential data source by passing relevant data that has been deemed valuable for other organization decision makers. So that's the pipe in the bottom right hand corner of the, uh, of the picture is essentially illustrating data flowing to your data warehouse. A data lake can be a very valuable tool for your business analysts. It allows for data exploration without having to wait for IT to model the data and all the work. And more importantly, the time that is involved with preparing and cleansing new data to put in the data warehouse. Business analysts can focus on delivering value to the organization by doing things such as exploring an organization's customer service data or data streamed in from social media sites to understand customer sentiment on the company's products and services. Or exploring sales data to understand customer preferences or ordering patterns, which then can help equip the sales organization to adjust their sales strategy accordingly or exploring marketing data to possibly discover new market trends earlier that enables database decisions versus relying on that gut feel or reading something on the Google that has already been realized by your competitors. A data lake can serve as a reservoir for data scientists to dive deep into the data waters and use the lake to more quickly broker predictive and prescriptive analytics. These data gurus can then be in their zone to do such thing as perform in-depth sales forecasting by incorporating effects like seasonality, industry trends, pricing, and promotional efforts to predict future sales. 
<clears throat> or build propo promotional pricing model to predict the expected increase in volume for every 1% in price discounting, or build a propensity model to determine which customers have the highest probability of making a purchase to dramatically increase response rates for marketing campaigns, or prescript a best course of action to reverse a downturn in sales by analyzing customer churn that internally may feel like a gut feel, but you can back it up with data that can provide optimized marketing actions. Now, all this is very feasible, and this goes back as part of the velocity virtuous cycle I spoke to earlier. We see this, and Dunn Solutions has experience in doing this. Now, a data lake can also be a repository for visual analytics. It is a very cost-effective way for your data to be exposed to enable faster delivery of dashboards and visualizations. You can use your Tableau, your Power BI, or one of many other visualization tools available today to consume that data. A situation I actually encounter regularly are customers that want dashboards and visualizations to help get better visibility on what's going on. <clears throat> I'll have a customer come to me and want a dashboard for a particular domain. I'll say, great, I can help you with that. Do you know where your data lives? The customer will say, in the original source system. Well, then of course we go down the path of, well, we first, we typically don't recommend building analytics on top of your transactional systems, nor is it likely that your IT department will even allow it. The customer then sometimes explains that they talked to their IT department about getting the data into their data warehouse, but it didn't really get anywhere because of the amount of time it would take and the sticker shock it would be to gather all the requirements uh, to create a properly modeled data mart and then write the ETL process to copy the data to the warehouse. Obviously, this is frustrating and a common obstacle. Customer just wants simple dashboards and it feels like it shouldn't be that complicated. Now, alternatively, let's say if we could simply copy the data needed for the dashboards to a data repository, AKA a data lake. We could build a proof of value that if it makes sense to institutionalize a solution, IT and with the help from Dunn Solutions could build the pipeline into your data warehouse. If for whatever reason, the proof of value doesn't pan out, there's really nothing lost. The data still sits in the lake and maybe it will become value of, for something else in the future. Now in a nutshell, the business purpose of a data lake is to feed data starved users and to make it easier for them to consume and combine data. And I haven't spoken to this yet, but another opportunity is data can be delivered just in time because the data just flows into the lake in its raw unproce unprocessed form. Hence real time streaming of data is now possible. We worry about how the data is going to be used later, and the lake provides a boundless playground. <clears throat> now, whenever we talk about data, we must also always consider security and governance. And I anticipate this isn't a surprise to anyone on this call. Think of a data lake as a data playground, and even playgrounds need to have some rules. Now, if you know me, I'm the kind of guy that prefers guidelines over rules, but when we are talking about data security and governance, we definitely want playground rules. Just like in many transactional systems and data warehouses, there can exist some, there can exist some data that shouldn't be made available to everyone, as well as sensitive data or the data that may fall under the regulatory umbrella, such as uh, GDPR or CCPA, uh, California Consumer Privacy Act, which actually goes into effect in a little over six months from now. And lastly, if you, have, if you already know the quality of the data is poor, then don't add it to the lake. It only adds contamination. Now, in the event your IT department hasn't yet added a data lake to your organization's technology landscape, or if the IT backlog doesn't include you and your data needs anytime soon, that is no longer a barrier either. With today's available cloud solutions, a server can be spun up in a matter of minutes in the cloud. And you pay for only the storage you use and storage is cheap. The computing power is real and the security exists that even allows some of the biggest financial institutions in the world to jump into the data lake. In addition, moving data to a repository is relatively simple since there are no transformations nor models to build. Again, <clears throat> and no models build. Again, this simplicity makes it cost effective to explore data to your hungry data consumers. If this concept of enabling your data consumers with access to more data to accelerate business decision-making with speed and direction, contact Dunn Solutions. We can discuss your data needs 
work with you to define a pilot project and get your organization on the path to realize your data, data lake. Uh, all right, so with that, um, we have some questions and answers. Mallory, I see we have a some questions that have been coming in through the chat. Uh, have we have some, a little time to answer some of those? Yeah, we do. Uh, so I just see one here, okay. First question I see is, um, you mentioned many organizations already have a enterprise data warehouse. Can you explain more why the raw unprocessed data can't just live in the data warehouse? Oh, that, <clears throat> thanks, Mel. That's a great question. Excuse me. Uh, first of all, there are a number of reasons, but first of which, by definition, a data warehouse is processed data. Second is that a data warehouse is built in a database that is designed <clears throat> and optimized for fast data retrieval, typically using a SQL language. And the database, you know, the licensing and the servers that it sits on aren't cheap. Plus your data consumers are still heavily relying on, T, on IT since they will control access as well as manage what goes into the warehouse. So, but now for a tiny organization, it is conceivable that you could use the staging area of your data warehouse as a data pond. Now that isn't a real term, I just made that up. But then you are limited to mostly structured data. And the minute you start making decisions to not include some data, uh, to save on storage or to avoid technical compl complexities, your data consumers won't really trust it and won't use it anyways. The other thing is that the platforms typically used for a data lake are designed to hold endless amounts of data in any format. And there exists numerous tools that can read and crunch this data more efficiently. So that's kind of why, you know, for, for the most part, a data warehouse is processed data to answer the question, get into it short. Do we have another one, Mallory? Uh, yeah. Um, can a data lake replace a data warehouse? Oh, we, I hear that one a lot. Definitely not. Um, a data lake complements a data warehouse. They go, they go great together. The data lake can be used as a staging area for the warehouse. Hence, having a data lake with the data warehouse gets data in the hands of data consumers more quickly, which in turn adds value more quickly to the organization. Plus, having more eyes that can review and vet out the data can actually help with the data identification, uh, the quality of the data, and the formulation of the rules for moving the data to the warehouse eventually if it's deemed valuable for the rest of the organization. I think we have time for one more, Mallory. I got a, I got another call after this I got to get to. So. Okay. Uh, one. Okay. What is the term data swamp and how does it fit into this? Ah, data swamp. Um, yeah, I didn't actually mention the, the term data swamp, but it is, it's something that you, we we do here, out there. Um, a data swamp is really <clears throat> a data lake that was a result of poor data governance and poor management. The swamp analogy actually illustrates the negative impact of bad data and bad governance. The key takeaway <clears throat> for all everybody is that the value derived from a data lake will depend on the level of trust the data consumers have in the data contained in the data lake. I mean, that pretty much sums it up. Okay. If so. there's any other uh, questions, uh, please um, let us know. We'll, also, we'll stay on for another minute or two, and uh, we'll try to answer them later on. Uh, we'll send, send answers by email. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.